you are this you know i think it's fair to say you're a prolific content creator i mean i feel like i i don't a minute doesn't go by where your face doesn't pop up on my instagram feed some somewhere but hey, something's going um, right there. You're always yeah, um but but i mean you are a, a, a real workhorse in terms of churning out content and not just when i say churning out that sounds wrong you're not you're 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 creating deep dive meaningful well informed conversations with really interesting people that are well researched and very well produced but you are doing that with such ridiculous regularity how are you managing to do that alongside you know being a husband being a father you travel a lot for these interviews i think that's a real difference between you and a lot of people like me obviously it's all it's all virtual you often go to hotels do the set have your studio how are you doing it do you do you have like extra hours in the day than the rest of us it's i mean <laughs> it's really kind of you to say that it's not just me i'm so fortunate that as a content creator the best part about this has been that i've allowed other content creators who are you know the best at what they do which is editing videos or uh, being an audio engineer or writing copy or whatever it happens to be, making graphics, they're now part of this world and they're able to achieve their dream of being a content creator through the content that we're making. And through all the interviews that I've done and all the content that I've made, that's the thing that I'm the most proud of. The fact that the content that we're making has created all these other opportunities for so many other content creators. So I've got a team of extremely talented people who look, I know how to edit. I know how to make graphics. I'm just not very good at it. And I did it for a long time. I learned how to edit when I was in high school. So I've been editing for a long, long, long time. But over the last two or so years, I realized that my editing skills are like a six out of 10. So if my editing skills are a six out of 10 and my graphic design skills are like a three out of 10, why not focus my time and my efforts on the things that I'm much better at, which is researching for interviews and actually doing these interviews and putting that content out? Why not focus that my attention on that stuff and then let the people who are the best at what they do, do what they do best? So that's been the whole idea here. Having a great team of incredibly talented people around me make me look that much better and maybe that much smarter. And do you think that's been the game changer for you? Because I would say looking at looking from the outside in at your journey, you know, you're you have had this kind of meteoric rise after being in this game for so long as a broadcaster. Um, do you think part of it is because the content that you're producing and the quality of it has has enhanced so much in the last couple of years? I think that's definitely been a part of it, but I've also been doing this for a long time. Like I got my very first internship and we can talk, talk about that story if you want Please. a little bit later on, but I got my first internship at a radio station in 2004. So like we're coming up on 20 years of me doing this and working in communication studies or working in broadcasting. So I think that's one element of it. The fact that I've just been doing this for a long time and like honing my craft like little by little and like still continuing to try to get better with every piece of content that I put out. I think the other part about it is there's this quote that I always come back to and it's, if you're willing to do what other people aren't willing to do, you're going to get results that other people aren't going to get. And before the world shut down in 2020, I had never done a virtual interview. I'd never done something over Zoom or StreamYard or Riverside. And I didn't want to do that because I, I thought that there was nothing better than being in the room with the person. I want to be able to shake their hand, look them in the eye, give them a hug, feel their energy. And then when the world shut down, two things happened. One, everybody was forced to go to doing these virtual interviews, myself included. I actually remember sending out a tweet like early in the pandemics, like mid-March and being like, hey, I'm about to do my very first virtual interview. Could somebody like help me out? Like, I don't know yeah. what platform to use. I don't know what equipment to use. And then number two, the other thing that happened during 2020 was a lot more podcasts, a lot more interview shows popped up because everybody's sitting at home and they're like, well, what do, what do I do now? I've always yeah. wanted to do this. Now's the perfect opportunity. And I always say the best thing about podcasting or YouTube is anybody can do it. And also the worst thing about podcasting or YouTube is anybody can do it. So I think there's a difference between doing it and being intentional about it. And that's been one of the things that I've really done over the last, call it two or three years. I've really been intentional about the content that we're making. I'm doing whatever I can, if possible, to do them in person, which is something that at least in the wrestling space, a lot of other creators aren't doing. 
And I'm also just trying to like, I understand that a podcast is, it's a big bite, right? It's like to, to say to someone, will you watch an hour long interview? Will you watch an hour long video? That's a big thing for them to bite yeah. and chew on. So I've been trying to make it a little bit more like bite size. So I like to think of the vertical videos that I put out, whether that's an Instagram reel, a TikTok, a YouTube short. I like to think of those as the breadcrumbs, right? Because yeah. if someone sends you, Ben, a video that's an hour and 17 minutes long and they go, man, this podcast is so good. You need to check this out. You're going to look at that and go, I am not spending that much time on this. Like, just send me the, like the time code of the thing you're talking about, but I'm not watching that whole thing. So I'm making these little breadcrumbs, so little, little taste tests for like, here's what I'm all about. Here's what my content's all about. If you like that, maybe you can go find the slice of bread, which is a two to five-ish minute clip on my CVV Clips YouTube channel. It's more of like a, an idea or a thought put in like a two minute clip. And if you like that, if you like the piece of bread, you can then go find the full loaf of bread, which is the entire episode. So I've just been trying to make it accessible for anyone with any sort of attention span. 